Hello everybody and welcome back to Magna Carta 2. Last video we came by boat to Abazet and we have now joined Sefi's counter sentinel unit and we're now part of the army so that's going to be kind of interesting to travel with Zephy Argo as well as our new party member Crocelle. You can only have up to three members in your party at once so at this point one of the party members are is going to be inactive. You can change your party formation at any time just by choosing formation, picking a character, and then uh, switching them. People in your active party get 100% of experience, however, members in your inactive party only get 70% of the experience. So that's something to keep in mind if you want to keep your party members really, really well balanced. My personal preference for party members at this time is Judo, Crocelle, and Zephy. Judo, of course, fights up close and personal. Crocelle is a wizard who fights using ranged fireballs, and Zephy can heal. I do like to use Argo from time to time, however, I keep him out of my party just because he's so damn powerful and we don't really necessarily need him at this point. But I will try and switch up party members, because it's not fun to leave one of them benched. In the barracks, uh, before you leave, you can speak to the barracks manager, and he will allow you to take a break if you wish, which is the same as resting. But you can also rest at pillars, so it's completely up to you what you want to do. And now that we are in the city, we can bring up the map, and as you can see, this is the entire map of Abazet. This includes the town we're currently in, the field, which is the world map, as well as a lot of the dungeons. So this is kind of nice because it gives you a large overview of all the places that we're going to be expected to go. So you have a little bit of time to sort of take it all in and prepare for the types of things that you are going to be doing. Now this girl right outside of the guild headquarters is going to give us a quest. At this point in the game we're going to be able to start picking up on more of the gameplay that we had in Highwind Island. We're going to be picking up quests and we can also start to do some shopping. Uh, this girl is going to ask us to escort someone to the common mind. He's waiting at the city entrance uh, and we will be taking care of that shortly. But before we leave the city, what I want to do is pick up a few treasure chests. Unfortunately, at this time, the game is not going to allow us to go into the main part of the city and do some shopping. Which is kind of a pain. We have to complete a couple of things first. And so for now, we're stuck with the equipment that we have unless we pick some up on the world map. In this chest, we have an attack level 1, defense level 1 common, and we're going to go over what commons are a little bit later. But for now, we're just going to keep that in our inventory. And that chest was in the Scholar's House. We're pretty much making a circle from where we started to enter all of the houses and collect a few treasures. You can, of course, do this later as well if you wish. And there should be a chest in this house as well, if I recall. This one contains 150 Sid. And there should be one more chest lying around as well. And I do believe it's in the middle of the map. There is a store over here, if you want to buy a few items. These are the Obvious people, they serve as merchants. But unfortunately, at this point, it's only going to be items and a couple of belts that you could use as accessories. But if we scroll over to the armor and weapons tabs, you can see that there is nothing at this moment, which is kind of a shame. There is an achievement in this game for getting every single weapon in the game for every single character. And that does include DLC, so you do have to have DLC in order to get that achievement, but... I am hoping to get that achievement at some point. Or to at least show you guys how to get it, because I have already achieved, achieved it. I have 100% of the achievements for this game. 
but I'll try my best to keep a running count of all of the weapons that you can get for each character. Now with those three treasure chests collected, at this point we can now go outside of the town using the town gate exit. And there we're going to find out a little bit more. Alright, so now you'll have your party members out here since it's an open world and we'll be able to engage in enemies uh, in combat mode as well. Juto, take this. What? Come on, you don't even know what a cube is? Are you sure you really want to give him a cube? Of course I am. He's a member of the Counter Sentinel unit now. What the heck is a cube? Is it really that big a deal? Allow me to graciously enlighten you, my ignorant friend. A cube is a device that allows you to receive letters from others. How do you get letters with something like this? First, you enter the characters into the cube. It converts those into Khan, slips it into the Khan that flows throughout the world, and it's sent to the pillar in whatever region you want. Uh, what? Oh well, I suppose your brain isn't capable of understanding even when it's explained to you. Look, just try to remember that cubes are used to send and receive letters. Uh... That's a dedicated Southern Forces cube, so if there are any Southern Forces pillars in the area, you'll be able to send and receive. Pillars? The ones you use to save memories? Well, I'll be. You knew that. Pillars make it possible to save human memories by converting them into Khan. The Southern Forces pillars are all interconnected, so the pillars can share information between each other. Also, all letters sent by someone using a cube are delivered by pillars to their recipient. And you can check the letters you've received from the main menu. Our operation orders sometimes come in via cube, so make sure you check it. <laughs> Don't be such a know-it-all. Everybody knows this stuff. That's enough. Juto, as a member of the Counter Sentinel unit, you'll do most of your fighting in a group from now on. Would you like to study party combat? The situation is exactly the same as it was on Highwind Island. Do you know how party combat works? Would you like to learn? She's going to offer us a battle tutorial, but it's very long and convoluted, and she will send us the information via cube if we skip it. Just in case, I'll send you information on party combat to your cube. Make sure you go over it, alright? Understood. So, we're going to skip it and be on our way. If you have a flashing mail icon on the bottom right next to the map, you can press V and you can bring up your cube mail. And it's really nice because it's all sorted by category. Private letters are letters you receive generally from your party members. Uh, battle is anything you need to know for battling. And tutorial is just tutorial stuff. So that's all pretty basic. You can also access it from the main menu, like Curl Cell said, by going to information and then bringing up cube mail. You can also look at your current quests if you want, required and optional. And you can also see what percentage of the game you've done. So far we're 5% done. And keep an eye on that running total because it will keep an accurate total throughout the entire game. So if you get to the end of the game and you've reached 98%, you know you've missed something. So if we want to just quickly go over some of this mail, I think I can probably show you guys better than it would be reading. I'm also going to ignore that guy for now. We'll just have to remember his location. He's right outside the gate. If you bring up the battle menu pressing Y, you can go over to Leader. And you can switch your party leader. So I can switch to Corsell. If I'm in combat mode, I can use the directional pad. And I can change my members using the symbols. 
So for example, Judo would be up on the directional pad, Zephy would be down and Crowset would be left. So it's very easy to change your party members while you're in battle. And then finally, you can also change it through the menu, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, you can just scroll over your party member and press X to make them the active leader. So there's three different ways you can do it. And you need to change leaders often in order to chain and in order to access their special ability. Judo, for example, can only harvest, as we learned in the harvesting tutorial. Let's go! Crocell can light fires and Zephy can float, I do believe. So each character has their own unique thing that they can do out on the field map and you will need to change party members accordingly. And we can also learn about chain attacks if I get the opportunity to do this before we kill the enemy. These enemies are kind of weak. You can chain. Uh, if you go into overheat and you use a combo move, you can then change party members and chain over. And it makes your attack go up by 1.5%. Uh, so you can chain between two members, and if you manage to pull off a successful chain between two members, you can then do a chain break when you switch to a third member, which I think increases your attack power by 2 or 2.5. So that's just a way of making your attacks more powerful, and it's a way to get rid of enemies a lot faster. Uh, I will try and show that off a lot more, and as we get into tougher battles, we are going to see that a lot. But unfortunately, at the moment, it's kind of hard to show off because these enemies are so weak. And the very last thing in Zephy's uh, tutorial that she would have told you is just relating to Attribute Con. You can see on the top right hand side, you have the four elements, fire, water, uh, wind, and thunder or lightning. And you can see that the three are lit up right now. Zephy uses Wind Con and Crocelle uses Fire Con. If you're in an area where their con is strong, their con meter will go up faster and sometimes it'll even go up automatically if you're in an area where their attribute is very strong and this allows them to use their abilities more often, of course. Uh, I don't think we got anything really interesting from our queue. We got a couple of more letters. But I'm not really going to go through these right now, since I have pretty much explained everything that she has to teach us. So let's go back and speak to this guy, since he was chasing us. He seems to want our help. And he's going to give us a monster hunting request. And we just fought a bunch of these guys. I probably should have talked to him first, but I didn't want to get too off track. He wants us to kill some of these poisonous worms. And as you can see, they look like that. We were just fighting them a minute ago. We need to fight them without being hit with a poisoned condition. And if we do get poisoned, he's going to give us some antidotes to cure it. And again, this is more of a tutorial type quest, but it's an easy one. You get 400 experience for finishing it, which is not bad. And it just teaches you about some of the status effects like poison. Now, unfortunately, because I've already wiped out the poisonous worms, there's not really any for me to fight at the moment. We also need to escort that guy over to the common mind. So I'm not really sure what I want to do first. I guess for now I'll just stop the video. Uh, we'll just kind of leave this as a short battle tutorial. And as you can see, if I pull up the map once again, we have got a ton of area to explore. And our next objective isn't going to be available to us unless we go to the werewolf's hideout, which as you can see is quite a ways away. So by the time we get to our objective. We should have finished a couple of quests and gained a few levels along the way, so I think that'll be exciting. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.